welcome back. Today we will discuss in details about the brief convention um, Paris convention 1967 and the Bern contact 1971. So, this will be discussed in reference to the uh, like WPIO website as it is mentioned over there. So, uh, now we will go into the like out, outline of today's module which consists of like the discussion will be on Paris convention 1967, the scope of the industrial property, the provisions of national treatment, rights of property, common rules, the Bern contract 1971, the principles of the Bern contract 1971 and principles of national treatment. Then we will go for the principle of automatic protection and principle of independence of protection, minimum standards of protection and common rules under Bern, Bern contract 1971. So, the content and the source of these slides have been from the official website of the WPIO World Intellectual Property Organization as you can see from here. So, we will start with a discussion with the what was the discussion in the Paris convention 1967 is that it is one of the uh, first in a way the intellectual property right treaties which was signed in Paris, France on 20th March 1883. Its objective was to establish a union for protecting the industrial property. The provisions of the convention broadly fall into three main categories. The categories are national treatment, priority rights and common rules. Here we will visit all three of them. So, the Paris convention concluded in 1883 and it was revised in, revised in Brussels in 1900 at Washington in 1911 in the Hague in 1925 at London in 1934 at Lisbon in 1958 at Stockholm in 1967 and was amended in 1979. The Paris Convention applies to industrial property in the widest sense including patents, trademarks, industrial designs, util utility models, a kind of small scale patent provided for by the laws of some countries, service marks, trade names, geographical indications and the repression of unfair competition. In the previous two discussions, we have already discussed about the terms mentioned over here in these slides. In today's discussion, as we already discussed in the earlier two lectures, we will discuss in details about the provisions which were there in the Paris Convention and the, like the burn in 1971. So, First, we will discuss according to this convention, what is the establishment of the union and the scope of industrial property according to the article 1. So, all the member countries to which the convention applies constitute union for protecting the industrial property. The protection of the industrial property is applicable to patents, utility models, industrial designs, trade marks, service marks, trade names, indications of source or appellations of origin and the repression of unfair competition. If you can connect all these were mentioned under intellectual property acts and in trips under intellectual properties which are of industrial like property nature. So, this in this connection this discussion becomes very important. Industrial property shall be understood in the broadest sense and shall apply not only to industry and commerce proper, but likewise to agriculture and extractive industries and to all manufactured or natural products for example, wines, grains, tobacco, leaf, fruit, cattle, minerals, mineral waters, beers, flowers and flour. So, what you see like even if you are talking of industrial property, it is the definition is very wide and it gives coverage to almost like the wide gamut of things 
starting from like manufactured products or natural products and like to to agricultural and extracted products also. Patents shall include the various kinds of industrial patents recognized by the laws of the countries of the union such as patents of importation, patents of improvement, patents and certifications of additions etcetera. What are the provisions of the national treatment? The convention provides that as regards the protection of industrial property, each contracting state must grant the same protection to nationals of other contracting states that it grants to its own nationals. Nationals of non-contracting states are also entitled to national treatment under the convention if they are domiciled or have a real and effective industrial or commercial establishment in the contracting state. So, it means in simple words like it words it calls for application of the same rules to the nationals of all the states that are the member of the convention with respect to the application on granting of industrial property rights provided they hold an establishment in that respective state. So, it talks of like uh, equal treatment to everyone and not discriminating based on whether you belong to that country and contracting state um, or not. Like equal treatment and equal opportunity given to everyone who has an establishment there present in the contracting state right to property or right of property. The convention provides for right of property in the case of patents and utility models where they exist, marks and industrial designs. This right means that on the basis of a regular first application filed in one of the contracting states, the applicant may within a certain period of time. 12 months for patents and utility models, 6 months for industrial design and marks, apply for protection in any of the other contracting states. So, it, this right for, of property and this um, like opportunity for the person to within the 12 months for the patent, filing of patents in one contracting state or 6 months for industrial designs and marks, you are able to equally secure your right in other contracting states gives you an immense opportunity. So, that you get an equal treatment everywhere and maybe nobody gets opportunity on encroaching on your rights. These subsequent applications will be regarded as if they had been filed on the same day as the first application. In other words, they will have priority as expression right of priority over applications filed by others during the same period of time for the same invention, utility model, mark or industrial design. Moreover, the subsequent applications being based on the first application will not be affected by any event that takes place in the interval such as the publication of an invention or the sale of the articles bearing a marker incorporating an industrial design. So, this gives you like the again an immense opportunity with which talks of like even if situations have changed in between, even if other like other applications have come up with the same type type of design or invention, but still your we will be given a priority because you filed for the um, patent in one of the contracting uh, state and within 12 months or 6 months for industrial design you are Finding, filing it for the uh, next con contracting states. So, you will be given that advantage over there which is truly meaningful.
One of the great practical advantages of this provision is that applicants seeking protection in several countries are not required to present all of their applications at the same time, but have 6 to 12 months to decide in which countries they wish to uh, seek protection and to organize with due care the steps necessary for securing protection. So, it gives you a time to like take a rational decision, work on your decision to find out like where you are going to seek for the protection of your right. Next, we will discuss about the common rules. The union lays down some common rules which all member states are required to follow. Patents. Patents granted in different contracting states for the same invention are independent of each other. The granting of a patent in one contracting state does not oblige other contracting states to grant a patent. A patent cannot be refused, annulled or terminated in any contracting state on the ground that it has been refused or annulled or has been terminated in other contracting state. So, each contracting state can decide on whether to grant the patent or not to grant the patent like and like if it has been refused or granted in one of the patents in one of the contracting state does not mean the same fate is awaited in other contracting states. So, for the patents granted in different contracting states for the same invention are independent of each other. The inventor has the right to be named as such in the patent. The grant of a patent may not be refused and the patent may not be invalidated on the ground that the sale of the patented product or of a product obtained by means of the patented process is subject to restrictions or limitations um, resulting from the domestic law. In case of Marx, the Paris Convention does not regulate the conditions for filing and registration of Marx, which are determined in each contracting state by domestic law. No application for the registration of a Marx filed by a national of a contracting state may be refused, nor may be a registration be invalidated on the ground that the filing or registration and renewal has not been affected in the country of origin. So, these kind of protection that we get uh, uh, helps us. So, this, this is actually focusing on the uh, due care, this is actually focusing on the due care approach which the convention has taken to take enough care and give enough space for the uh, people to come up with inventions, come up with new ideas and thoughts and so that their um, ideas and the willingness to pay, patent them is not uh, like uh, threatened by the fact like what will happen if one in one contracting state it is rejected, what will happen if like it is um, like um, it is not like within the maybe purview of the um, some of the domestic laws happening. So, uh, this protection, this due care taken approach taken in the Paris Convention gives a lot of trust and it develops a lot of stability in the mind of the people to think freely about invention and uh, moving forward to patenting their ideas. The registration of a mark obtained in one contracting state is independent of its possible registration in any other country including the country of origin. Consequently, the lapse or annulment of a registration of a mark in one contracting state will not affect the validity of the registration in the other contracting states. So, this kept independent of each other because this uh, we can understand sometimes some decisions or situations also which may hold good for one country may not be applicable for the other country. 
So, these provision keeps its your scope open to file for trademarks in different contracting states. In case of industrial design, industrial designs must be protected in each contracting state and protection may not be forfeited on the ground that articles incorporating the design are not manufactured in that state. Trade names, protection must be granted to trade names in each contracting state without there being an obligation to file or register the names. Indications of source, measures must be taken by each contracting state against direct or indirect use of a false indication of the source of goods or the identity of their producer, manufacturer or trader. Unfair competition, each contracting state must provide for effective protection against unfair competition. Next, we will discuss about the Bern contract of 1971. Bern convention for the protection of the literary and the artistic works in 1886. The Bern convention deals with the protection of works and the rights of the authors. So, what we see over here like if we can draw an analogy with the intellectual property uh, rights and the two different types of rights we have seen one is about the industrial design property like industrial designs and other is for regarding like copyrights which is more of a intangible in terms of the protection uh, and of the literary and art artistic works which is more for the aesthetic type of things. So, the burn contract of 1971 deals with those kind of things the second when it, type which are dealing like the copyright part. The Bern Convention deals with the protection of the works and rights of their authors. It is based on three basic principles and contains a series of provisions for determining the minimum protection to be granted as well as special provisions available in developing countries that want to make use of them. The Bern Convention concluded in 1886 was revised at Paris in 1896 and at Berlin in 1908, completed at Bern in 1914, revised in Rome in 1928 and Brussels in 1948, at Stockholm in 1967, at Paris in 1971 and was amended in 1979. Bird Convention is for the protection of literary and artistic works in 1886. So, it deals with the protection of the works and rights of the authors. The principles of Bern contract are the principle of national treatment, the principle of automatic protection, the principle of independence of protection. Principle of national treatment. Works originating in one of the contracting states, that is, works the author of which is a nation is of national of such a state or works first published in such a state, must be given the same protection in each of the other contracting states as the latter grants to the works of its own nationals, like principles of national treatment. This is an important uh, uh, like principle where we find the application of the rights and duties principle as we have discussed in the initial lectures. It is maybe be, it looks into the duty of each of the contracting states to respect the uh, rights of the authors of any uh, uh, works or artistic work maybe in another contracting state and to respect that right as we have would have done for their own rationals and who have done some literary work in their own state. So, because it is a duty 
to recognize and respect the right of the um, authors and that is how the, the authors can enjoy their rights of uh, like um, having a protection even if they are not um, uh, within their contracting state and extending uh, beyond it also. So, the, uh, it is a mutual uh, right and the duties perspective which is reflected over here. Principle of automatic protection protection must not be conditional upon compliance with any formality. This principle implies that copyright protection exists automatically from the time a qualifying work is fixed in a tangible medium. Principle of independence of protection Protection is independent of the existence of the protection in the country of the origin of the work. This principle indicates that the protection in question is independent of the existence of protection in country of origin and the where the work was produced. In case a contracting state provides for a longer term of protection than the minimum prescribed by the convention and the work ceases to be protected in the country of origin. Protection may be denied once protection in the country of origin ceases. Minimum standards of protection. The minimum standards of protection relate to the works and rights to be protected and the duration of protection works. The protection must include every production in the literary, scientific and artistic domain, whatever may be the mode of form of its expression. Exclusive rights recognized, subject to certain limitations and expectations, the right to translate, the right to make adaptations and arrangements of the work, the right to perform in public dramatic, dramatic, musical and musical works. The right to recite in a public literary works, the right to communicate to the public the performance of such works, the right to broadcast, the right to make reproductions in any manner or form, the right to use the work as a basis for an audiovisual work and the right to reproduce, distribute, perform in public or communicate to the public that audiovisual work. The convention also provides for the moral rights that is the right to claim authorship of the work and the right to object to any mutilation, deformation or other modification of other derogatory action in relation to the work that would be prejudicial to the author's honor or reputation. So, it talks of the right to claim authorship and also the right to object and to protect against any mutilation, deformation or other modification or other derogatory action in relation to the work that would be prejudicial to the other author's honor or reputation. Now, a very important part of discussion is about the duration of protection. In the earlier discussions also we have seen like if copyright there has to be a balance between copyright granted and the time for what it is uh, granted. So, uh, what is the time frame for which it is granted for what uh, like um, things type of things copyright can be granted and all. So, here in this discussion the duration of the protection is also very important and let us see what this um, burn uh, contract tells about the duration. As we see as the duration of the protection, the general rule is that the protection must be granted until the expiration of the 50th year after the author's death. There are however exception to this general rule. 
in the case of undefined or pseudonymous work the term of protection expires 50 years after the work has been lawfully made available to the public except if the pseudonym leaves no doubt as to the author's identity or if the author discloses his or her identity during that period. In the latter case, the general rule applies. In the case of audiovisual or cinematographic works, the minimum term of protection is 50 years after the making available of the work to the public or release or failing such an event from the creation of the work. In the case of works of applied art and photographic works, the minimum term is 25 years from the creation of the work. What are the rights and limitations on the rights? This is also an important part of discussion as we need to understand it is on one side again it is having the right and the other side it is also balancing about it. So, other people also get an opportunity to work on similar nature of things. The Berne Convention allows certain limitations and exceptions in economic rights that is cases in which protection works may be used without the authorization of the owner of the copyright and without payment of compensation. These limitations are commonly referred to as free uses of protected works and are set forth in articles 9 section 2 reproduction in certain special cases. 10 quotations and use of works by way of illustration for teaching purposes like then 10 B that is a reproduction of newspaper or similar articles and use of works for the purpose of reporting of current events and 11 B that is ephemeral recordings for broadcasting purposes. The appendix to the Paris Act of the Convention also permits developing countries to implement non-voluntary licenses for translation and reproduction of the work in certain cases in connection with educational activities. In these cases, the desired use or the described use is allowed without the authorization of the right holder subject to the payment of remuneration to be fixed by the law. So, this we see this appendix to the Paris Act, it allows like more research to happen, rethinking to be happen on particular literary work which is already there and referring to it then stating it in the translations and mentioning it in part of a literary work. This encourages more discussion, re-evaluation of the literary work which ultimately enriches it and it is very important for like enriching a particular domain. So, the provision in this appendix to the Paris Act helps us to reach that objective. The Bird Union has an assembly and an executive committee. Every country that is a member of the union and has adhered to it, at least the administrative and the final provisions of the Stockholm Act is a member of the assembly. The members of the executive committee are elected from among the members of the union except for Switzerland which is the member ex officio. Under the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights trips agreement, the principles of national treatment, automatic protection and independence of protection also bind those WTO members not party to the Bern convention. In addition, the TRIPS agreement imposes an obligation of most favored nation treatment under which advantages accorded by a WTO member to the nationals of any other country must also be accorded to the nationals of all WTO members. This is to be noted that the possibility of delayed application of the TRIPS agreement 
does not apply to national treatment and most favored obligation. Under the TRIPS agreement, an exclusive right of rental must be recognized in respect of computer programs and under certain conditions audiovisual work. Under the TRIPS agreement, any term of protection that is calculated on a basis other than the life of a natural person must be at least 50 years from the first authorized publication of the work or failing such an event 50 years from the making of the work. However, this work does not, this rule does not apply to photographic works or to works of applied art. It is to be noted that the WTO members, even those not party to the Berne Convention, must comply with the substantive law provisions of the Berne Convention, except that WTO members not party to the Convention are not bound by the moral rights and provisions of the Convention. So, here we find like this uh, Convention, this contract and also in that with respect to trips, there are certain points which are common which are applicable to all, um, there are certain restrictions and also correspondingly there are certain relaxations also as per whether you were party to that convention, you were a member to the convention or not. So, the details of this um, information can be more um, details can be found out in this website. Here in this lecture, we have tried to um, sensitize about the uh, burn um, contract and the Paris Convention and its relationship to trips, like what, what are the common points where they come together, where, what are the parts of like maybe where they are diversing from each other what are the relaxation given to non-member countries and um, like what are the common points which needs to be followed by everyone whether you are a member country or not. As a totality, it helps in the protection of the intellectual property of the um, like individual or the um, for the um, products which are designed or for, or for the copyrights for when you are talking of in terms of maybe goods or services and uh, artistic works even. This is important for the engineers to know about it again like when you are there thinking of some uh, prototype building, model building coming up with the designs and then if they want to protect it. So, that from getting copied by others and want to be from like financially gaining from it the knowledge of this part of patents then in pr protection of trademarks, protection of industrial designs and copyrights becomes very relevant for them. And if they have to like uh, do this on a larger range where maybe different nations will uh, is where they are uh, aiming for a greater scope and reach then of course, other countries are going to get included in it and in that case they need to understand the provisions of these conventions, so that their rights can be protected in all the contracting states and as a result the they can um, like get their rights protected in the con all the contracting states and also like um, there others who want to uh, start who have started late or who wants to improve on the earlier designs, they also get to understand what are the scope and what are the provisions for them. So, that in spite of have, having the fact like somebody must be have holding a patent of something, somebody must be having a copyright of something, then what is the opportunity present for the new entrants who want to improve on that or who want to research on that and add value to it or do something different. Thank you. In the next class, we will discuss about the ethical issues related to mm, computers and the other digital world. Thank you.